Hello and welcome to the Proficient Marketo Magento Connector Demo. Here at Proficient, we know the importance of connecting your marketing automation and commerce platforms in order to provide the best customer experience. This connector provides key features including a base set of modules that can be used by your teams, ready-to-use email templates that include program status channel configuration, abandoned cart data for both prospects and customers that push to Marketo to trigger emails, and an initial Marketo email, Marketo list upload, program configuration, and reporting to gauge email send success. Now I am going to hand it over to Sankulp to take us through the Magento side of the connector. I'm Sankulp Shekhar, a technical architect within uh, the commerce practice for uh, Proficient. And I'm going, to, I'm going to be walking you through the Magento configurations for the connector. I'm into uh, Magento's uh, admin panel here, uh, or the or the backend as commonly known. As part of the Marketo, uh, th there are certain configurations that needs to be done in order for the for the two systems to communicate with each other, uh, and wherein you have to provide the endpoint URL, uh, what your identity URL looks like. Uh, they can be easily grabbed from the Marketo's uh, admin panel, and and be pasted here. Uh, then we we need to create a user with client ID and client secret uh, where we can pass on uh, those details and, and those details need to be pasted and saved here. There we have a button which allows us to make sure that the provided credentials are working correctly. So if we see a token message that implies that it was successful and there was no error, so the client credentials and everything are saved in there correctly. Moving on next uh, on the other pair of configuration that we might need to do here, is um, determining uh, the kind of strategy we need to use for the data push. So we have different strategies here. Uh, first being batch or uh, single or real time, and or we, if you want to disable the data push altogether, we can do a none. Batch uh, is, is a processing wherein it reads the data uh, on, on a cycle basis or in a batch and then push them out through batch APIs or bulk APIs to uh, Marketo. And you can manage the schedule here by by uh, defining how frequently you want this process to be, right? So, for example, if I want to do it once in a day, I I can specify at what time it is uh, that needs to be done. Or if I want to do it every every hour, I can specify at what interval of an hour I need to do it. For example, I want to do it every two hours, starting from uh, 6 a.m. until 10 p.m. Right now, I can specify the time and uh, the automated jobs that we have in the back end would uh, work according to the specified time. The last one is the unit or the single, or also we can call it as the real time, which uh, will push the data uh, simultaneously as the changes reflects within Magento's database into Marketo. However, a word of caution that this might uh, take a lot of API calls uh, and might uh, reflect on your daily limits. Right. Uh, moving on next, after uh, the configurations and we have specified the details here, the other part we might need to look into is the object level configurations, wherein you can say, do we want to push in a person data? A person uh, translates as a customer within Magento, uh, and within uh, market, it's re reflected as a person field or, or an object. So you can specify if we need to make a push on the data, yes or no. Uh, if you want to use a partition, we can always go back and select what partition we want to push this data into. If we do, uh, if we want to do no value, it will always go back to the default partition as per market as configuration. At the very last, uh, we have an option to specify the field mapping. So uh, we can specify which market of field takes what Magento fields data. So you, on, on your right, you have all the fields that are the attributes within Magento for the customer attribute. And on your left, you have all the fields from uh, the Marketo configuration. So, and all of these are loaded on a real time. So if I want to add more fields, I can add more and more fields here and uh, you know change the configuration as it seems fine. For default, we have map first name, last name, middle name, and the email address to uh, the respective fields within Marketo. Now, once these configurations are done and saved and you have cache cleared, 
uh, as a process within Magento, uh, these data are, are uh, ready to be pushed into uh, Marketer. Moving on next, uh, here is how we can push it. So we usually would have uh, an automated job running in the back end, and as we talked about the processing time, it will take up the processing time accordingly. And based on that, uh, it will process. However, in our case, we are doing a manual approach, and I also wanted to show out on how we can do a bulk push, right? So let's take an example that this is a new store. For now, I'm, I'm using Postman, which is an external application to help uh, with uh, the API calls, and I'm calling one of the APIs here, and I'm seeing that the status is importing. But once uh, we, we, we plan to uh, replicate the same process through the console so that it can be easily managed. Now, as you can see here, it says that the process has been completed. The batch ID has been processed and completed and number of uh, records that were imported were 4,000. Now, if I have to check and make sure that everything is working, I, I go back here. Uh, I go to my, into my marketers database and on admin and I have created a smart list uh, which filters on the uh, unique uh, email pattern that I have created and it uh, shows me the list of people that I have in my system. And as you can see, I have 3999 uh, record being pushed and one of the records has a different name, so it doesn't show up here. But uh, uh, as you can see, we have this many records pushed and and, and all of them has a common um, uh, first name, last name parameter. Uh, so the only data that has been pushed so far has been first name, last name, and email for those users. So this way, the person data or the customer data would be imported or sent out to Marketer through bulk push and similarly through the automated jobs that runs in the background as per the schedule that we have uh, set up. On moving on to the next or the other part uh, that we wanted to do here was the pushing the abundant card data so the abandoned cart uh, will have, have same fields. So as an admin or a store ad manager, I can go back here and I can specify if I want to do abandoned cart. If I say yes, if uh, I can say yes, and I can specify at what threshold or what number of hours uh, leads to calling a card as abandoned. Right, and then at that's when that conf uh, automated job that we have already scheduled would play and push all that ca card data uh, to Margaro. And uh, Kenzie, I'm going to pass this on to you for about the abundant card data. Thanks, Sankalp. Um, this is Kenzie Caldwell. I am a senior Marketo architect with the Proficient Marketo team, um, and I'm going to be walking you through how we built this out on the Marketo side of things. Okay, so now we're in Marketo, and we can see that we have our um, Magento Abandoned Cart Nurture created here. And so here we can see that we have three separate emails that are associated with this Abandoned Cart Nurture, where the first one is going to output the um, cart data to say, hey, it looks like you forgot something. We have a second email that also outputs the cart data, but then also includes some um, featured items that that person might be also interested in. Um, and then the third one, again, includes the cart items, but also includes a promo code to maybe get 10% off of what they have in their cart because it's still, it still hasn't been purchased. And so the way that we are kind of outputting this information is, so this is one of our test records. This is a text area field that houses JSON data. This is where Magento is pushing in the actual cart information for this person. So within the emails that we've created, we are using email script tokens to read that JSON data and output it in the email. And so if I just double click on the script token, this is basically outlining um, and understanding that JSON data that's being inserted into that field. So if we look at one of the emails, let me preview it and I enter in the email address of our test record, we can see that our test record has Rafa short, sports shorts in their cart currently. The nice thing about this is that 
um, this is going to output just depending on whatever is in that person's cart. And so it's very dynamic. Um, so we only actually need one email that will dynamically change based off of what someone actually has in their cart based off of the data that's being pushed in by Magento. So for this test record, she also has Rafa shorts in her cart. Let me grab one more. This person's cart is empty, so they completed their purchase. So they actually wouldn't qualify for this nurture because they purchased everything in their cart. So let me pick one last one. And so this test record has the Muna pullover hoodie and the Argus all-weather tank in her cart. Um, and so if we toggle this back to the default, we'll just see that there's an, a, an email script token sitting right here, my cart contents. And that um, relates directly to that email script token that I just showed in the token of the nurture itself. Um, and since this is sitting at the, the program level, it applies to all of the emails within it. So if we look at email two, this is also including that cart items token in the email. So this is the featured item email uh, has the same header and everything. My cart contents are listed here along with a featured product. So if I put in one of those email addresses from our test record, we'll see the Rasha Sports Short listed for this test record as it loads. So there's our Rasha Sports Short. And then for this test record, we should see the Muna hoodie and the all Argus All Weather Tank. So again, this is dynamic based off of the record as it runs through the email. And then this last email, email number three, also includes that cart items token here, but it also is listing a 10% off code um, to get an additional discount off of the current cart items. So now if you plug in this record, we'll see the moon hoodie and the Argus all-weather tank. So again, dynamic based off of the person as they receive that email. And so that's that's kind of how we have it built out in Marketo. Um, so now we wanted to pass it on to Beth to actually walk through kind of an example of someone going to the store, putting some carts in their items, and then receiving the emails um, after the allotted amount of time that basically determines if a cart has been abandoned or not. Thanks, Kenzie. Yes, this is Beth Schuler. Um, I am a Marketo architect with the Proficient Adobe practice, and I'm going to be walking you through a demo of what the end user would experience, um, you know, as a shopper on our Luma site here. So I'm going to be walking through the end user experience for, uh, you know, what the shopper would see on their end rather than what the uh, solutioner, the architect would see on the back end of Marketo and Magento. So this is just kind of walking through um, what what the shopper would experience as as kind of they go through this abandoned cart process. So I'm here on the Luma site and um, Typically, when people are shopping, you know, we know that they do just add items to their cart. And so as an example, I'm just going to add this Argus uh, all weather tank to my shopping cart. Um, and then also I'm going to go to the women's section and add this Mona um, hoodie to my cart as well. So we can see that if you view your cart, you can see the two items and the pictures of the items here in our cart. And so just imagine that the uh, shopper were to, you know, navigate away from this page and not complete the purchase. Um, what information would be then passed to Marketo is that, you know, this person did abandon their cart. And so from the user experience, they would receive an email um, on a given number of days later. So say 24 hours has passed, they would receive this email in their inbox and the email would simply, you know, have the Luma logo, uh, have the company's branded image and have some sort of messaging that says something 
to the tune of we noticed that your shopping cart uh, was abandoned or that you left something in your shopping cart. Um, and then what we've done here is we've just listed those specific items and included pictures of those those uh, those items that were left in the cart. And we've included a, a call to action link that just says check out now. And so the person will be directed back to the shop where they can go directly to their cart um, and then proceed to check out from there. If I decided not to continue with uh, my purchase at that point in time, Marketo would actually be able to know that the purchase was not completed through that uh, information that Magento passes to it. And so Marketo would then trigger an additional email. Um, potentially this could be a week later or three days later and just say, hey, are you still interested in these two items? If not, here is an additional feature product that you may be interested in. And so you can include any any additional number of call call to actions here that may kind of spring somebody's interest into purchasing an additional product. Or, of course, uh, we have links to these specific items. So somebody may say, you know what, I did want this hoodie, but I'm interested in the orange color instead or the purple color. And so uh, the purpose of these emails is really just to direct people to going back to the site to increase the likelihood that they will complete a purchase on these items we know they were interested in and potentially spark some interest to complete an additional purchase as well or just browse the site. Finally, what we have, as Kenzie had pointed out, was an additional email, which is really our um, special discount code so you know if the two previous emails didn't trigger somebody to want to complete the purchase um, we have added a luma 10 10 percent off discount code um, that they can enter when they do go and complete the purchase and so the hope is that if the previous two emails did not push the person to make the purchase of this final email well. And of course, all of this can be very, very customized and tailored. Um, none of this is set in stone. It's really just to serve an example of what type of messaging you could accomplish. And so on the back end, these second and third emails will not be sent if somebody does complete the purchase after receiving the first email. So Marketo knows not to continue to trigger further messaging. And so if I were to have bought after I received the first email, I would not receive emails two or three. However, you can also trigger off of additional behaviors. So if we know that somebody did complete the purchase after receiving that first email, what we could do is we could uh, do messaging like are you interested in these items kind of similar to this free feature product section so this is totally customizable within marketo whatever messaging you want to send in uh, this is really just to illustrate what type of functionality is available thank you for joining us for the marketo magento connector demo as an adobe platinum partner we are specialized in both marketo engage and magento commerce with this connector and our experienced team, we can help you realize the benefits of connecting marketing automation and commerce. For more information, visit our website at proficient.com.